in a lock and love, an emperor and secret society, eBay and golf. There's a whole lot to take in there. This story has it all. And the next chapter of The Talisman of Napoleon is about to be written. The piece, buried for over 100 years, is currently on auction in Florida. It belongs to a local man, Randy Jensen, who sat down with me for about an hour. In his words alone, I wanted to bring you the jaw-dropping story of how the talisman came into Randy's life and what he's learned about it since. Well, um, I've got a number of clubs that are that are pretty special. This is a Ping 1A, but it's a pre-1A because it's one of the first 100 models that he produced in May of 1959, Karsten Solheim. I started playing you know, tournaments in the area, and then I opened my own golf shop in, in about 1987, and I had it here in Omaha for 25 years. I saw uh, an ad on eBay for this for the Talisman of Napoleon, but it's just like some unknown piece, right? And so this guy inherited it from his father. His father had come over from the Netherlands and he was a landscape gardener. And we don't have a tremendous amount of information from the son because the father didn't tell him much more than, I found it while I was digging. I was digging a trench 15 feet down, here it is. So I sent him an email and said, uh, I got a golf shop, I'll trade you for some golf clubs. You know, just like, throw a little mud against the wall, right? And so he came back with, oh, I'm an avid golfer and the thing I've always wanted is a set of ping golf clubs, a brand new set of ping golf clubs. And I was like, well, I'll trade you a set of brand new ping golf clubs. So I got physical possession uh, February 3rd, 2005. That came in the mail, I opened the thing up, right? And so it took me 45 minutes to figure out that it was tarot coded, okay? Then it took me three years to figure out Napoleon Bonaparte that it belonged to Napoleon. And then it took me six years to do all of the decoding. It basically is a good luck charm that you would carry with you. Like that, like, like that, that tall and maybe like that wide. So it, it's a perfect size to put in like your pocket or a little pouch and put it in your purse or whatever, right? It's coded to reflect Napoleon's successful military career and also his personal love for Josephine. August 15th, 1802 is actually coded onto the piece. Napoleon's initials are coded on the piece in the same fashion that Josephine's initials are coded onto the piece. Napoleon's favorite painting was the Mona Lisa, and he had that hanging in his bedroom at the Tuileries Palace, and he sculpted the Sphinx in the image of uh, both Josephine in the pose of uh, the Mona Lisa. The thing is in really great condition, so I used to carry it around with me that whole season of 2005 in my pocket to golf tournaments as a good luck charm. While I'm going, I wonder what this piece could be. I can't figure out what it is. I don't know, but I'm just gonna carry it in my pocket as a good luck charm, when in fact, that's what it was. Well, we've had uh, experts say, uh, look at it and give um, a valuation of 250 million. Usually everybody's pretty uh, uh, taken by the whole idea, right? So it's something pretty out of the ordinary. I'll say it's at 45 million right now. The reserve is 50 million. Bidding will remain open through May 10th. Some proceeds would go to various charities, including Hall of Fame golfer Jack Nicklaus's. Randy wants to use his portion to open a golf museum in Omaha. Without provenance or a record of ownership, how can he be sure the piece belonged to Napoleon? You might wonder that. Randy's worked with experts in history, gemology, mathematics, and law on analysis. To read that full report, visit napoleonstalisman.com.